Hello and welcome to CTS. In this tutorial I'm going to take you through texture management on your terrains. Now this terrain has already had CTS added to it and we've already set up a profile for it in one of the earlier tutorials and we want to add or remove or even change the textures in our terrain. CTS doesn't give you this option directly in the texture settings it actually expects you to go to the terrain itself. The reason we do this is because the underlying terrain system drives the splat maps for the terrain and the splat maps for the terrain drives how CTS renders them. So rather than trying to influence splat maps directly, we actually rely on the Unity terrain system to manage them for us. And that's why we change our textures via Unity terrain. So let's select our terrain object and then our brush and then add a new texture. So we go edit textures, add texture we go to our textures here. Now these are this is a Megascans texture that I imported earlier. I used a Megascans texture because this is a fully PBR enabled texture and it'll show you how to use textures from different sources. So I'll drop my albedo into the albedo slot and I'll drop my normal into the normal slot and just go add. So now we've got a new texture in our terrain. Now one thing to note with that, I've already gone to the texture uh, when I imported it and changed it from default to a normal map so that CTS already understands that it's a normal map. So let's go over here and play with our texture. So we select our terrain and we select our texture and we paint it. Now notice what we're getting here is a black hole. CTS is not doing a great job at all. Well actually CTS is just doing what it's supposed to do. We haven't told CTS about this texture yet because we haven't updated our profile. So we'll go back to CTS, select our profile and go bake textures. And then sometimes you still won't get it so go apply profile and now we've got our new texture applied to our terrain. So if we look at that texture you can see that it's actually not working that well just yet. So the reason for this is that the smoothness is not baked correctly for this texture. So let's look at our new texture. You'll notice we've got an albedo, a normal, but there's no smoothness. Now by default textures with Unity Terrain, so the albedo texture, uses the RGB channel to store the color of the texture and the A or the alpha channel to store the smoothness of the texture. And textures that we source from Megascans don't have this smoothness in there. So if we go and have a quick look at this texture and we have a look at the alpha channel, you actually see that it doesn't have one. So what we're going to do is bake that smoothness into the texture that we then use to render with CTS. So I'll go back to my profile. And what I'm going to do is add a smoothness texture. Now when you hover over this, or even if you press the help button to get more detailed help, CTS will tell you about what's going on. In this case, what we want to do is add in a smoothness texture for our albedo. Now if you're using a metallic or roughness texture, CTS handles that as well. So if you've got a smooth texture, you can bake it in by the smoothness channel. Or if you've only got a rough texture or a roughness texture, you can bake that in to the smoothness of the texture we create. So what we actually do is we invert the roughness to create a smoothness and then we store that in the alpha channel of our albedo. So let's, let's go into our textures and grab our gloss. Now another thing to, to note about smoothness, we call it smoothness but it's also known as glossiness. So let's drag our gloss texture into here I notice that CTS goes red, that means you need to bake the textures again. We've made a change but the texture arrays which are actually driving the shader don't know about it yet. So we go bake textures. And now we've got properly applied smoothness to this texture. So you notice all those little shiny edges go away. So just to show you where things are stored and give you a sense of what's going on here, in our profiles directory, 
we've got the profile itself which is what we're operating with but you'll notice there's an arrays directory underneath that so this is the texture arrays that we've created which we're sending to the shader what we do is we aggregate all of the textures into a texture array and we send that one big blob of texture material off to the CTS shader and we do a different array for normals than we do for albedos so let's go back to our profile and modify this texture you can see it's starting to look it's quite a nice texture so let's adjust it a little bit so we can change our tile size talked about near and far um, earlier but if I zoom out keep zooming out keep zooming out it's really hard to see in this we render the size of the far version of the texture differently than the close version you can see the difference there and that's you know, one of the ways you can improve your tiling so what else do we want to do with this thing we could look at its normal power so we can just you know enhance it or reduce it a bit we can control whether we want to overlay geo onto this texture so if I turn on my geo for example you can see this texture is being influenced by geo now I've obviously made it way too dark but I'm just showing you to show you the concept so if we turn down geo power we'll get back our original texture so you can basically choose by texture how the different features of the system work so let's get rid of geo if we were to turn on snow you can see this texture is fully covered by snow and what I can do is I can reduce the snow power so that this texture is no longer influenced by snow so and you can also dial that up and down as well per texture which is really cool we can change the color of it sometimes you might have different versions of grass or different versions of rock and the colors aren't quite right so you can change the tint and you know create your space landscape or whatever it is that you want to do we can also dial up and down the brightness sometimes that's a useful thing to do as well and then there's the smoothness which is that glancing reflection so let's modify that as well we can increase the smoothness now it looks like a wet rock cool little tip let's say we had two versions of this rock and we had a version up here which we wanted on the hill and a version that we wanted to be wet by the water then we could actually add that rock to the terrain twice and we could have one configuration of it being just normal smoothness and we can have another configuration of it the one after this one being quite smooth and, and glossy and we could paint that smoothness next to the water so it's a really cool technique to even though you've essentially added the same texture twice but you've got a wet version of the texture and a dry version of the texture we could make this a triplanar texture uh, let's go and paint this on the edge of a cliff so we'll get a sense of that uh, maybe um, over here so I will turn off snow for the moment and we'll paint this texture in here and let's increase our brush There's nothing I can do about that that's just unity so let's go back to our profile and this texture is actually doing quite well on a steep slope anyway but some textures you'll find they'll stretch and they'll look pretty terrible and in that case what you can do is you can turn on triplanar and CTS will will mix and match the the way it renders the texture on the slope so that you don't get any tearing The next thing I want to do is show you height blending. So at the moment we're using this texture on the basic shader, but now what I want to do is use a different version of the shader, the advanced shader. And so we're just switching over to the advanced shader now. It takes Unity a second for to load it up. What it's actually doing is it's recreated uh, the texture arrays and resent them to the GPU. So now we've got the advanced version of the shader. With the advanced version of the shader, we've opened up a new texture slot, which is the height texture. 
And this is really cool because this allows us to do height blending. So let's go back over here. So here's the texture we've placed in the terrain and based on the, the strength which you use to paint it in, the normal unity way is to just do this sort of gradual blend, like a blurry blend, and that doesn't work that well sometimes. So what I'm going to do is set up a height texture on this so that CTS can do height based texture blending. So we'll go back to our profile and we'll select the height texture for this. So we'll find our textures and we've got a displacement texture here. Now the EXR you can see that Unity doesn't understand it so we're going to use the JPEG displacement texture for this. Oops. That's this one. Drop that in. CTS is telling us it needs to bake again. So we'll bake. So now CTS understands that this has got a height associated with it. And what we can start to do, as you can see, what we're doing is we're poking our texture out of the the texture underneath it. So just shut that down. All right, so the things that control your height are your splat map close sharp. This is how sharp those blends are at close distance. There's a splat sharp far, which is how defined they are in the far distance. So let's increase that. You can see now instead of just doing this sort of soft blend, we're doing a much harder blend. And then what we've got is a height map contrast and a height map depth. So as we change that, you can see we're actually choosing how the texture is popping out of the texture underneath it, how it's blending. And you can also change the depth of the texture. Now I haven't got other textures on this terrain which are have been set up correctly. So for example, I haven't got a height for all my other textures and to get the best value out of height map blending, you need to have all textures using height blending. But you can see we've got quite an interesting effect now where you've got the, the rock coming out of the grass. The next thing I wanted to show you with these textures is the tessellation shader. So I'll switch over to tessellation Again, we wait a few seconds because Unity's loading up a new shader and copying all the texture arrays across to it. It'll pop in in a second. So now we've got our tessellation shader. We have tessellation density and distances. So density is how much tessellation there is. And then distances is how far away we're going to render the tessellation onto your terrain. Interesting thing to note with tessellation is that although we're rendering the mesh slightly differently in a tessellated way, the underlying collider for your terrain is not being rendered differently at all. It's still just the same collider. So if you've got a character walking on the terrain and you've made your tessellation too exaggerated, it'll look like they're actually walking through the terrain. The best thing with tessellation is to just use it very, very sparingly. So let's go to the tessellation settings that have now been set up for this. and adjust the depth of the tessellation. So if we look at this, we change our tessellation depth and you can see that we're popping this thing up and down. Now the way we'd like to use tessellation is sparingly. It's, it's supposed to be something that just adds a little bit of extra pop to your terrain. You use it a bit like normals. So I tend to set up my tessellation and then I also modify my normals just to make sure they're all working together nicely. And you treat tessellation like normals. It's just a, a bit of an image effect that looks rather cool. So we've turned on our tessellation and we've raised our rock and we've made it a bit more interesting. But you notice we've got these funny looking patches. This is caused by shadow bias. So select your light and look at your bias on your shadows and you can modify this until you get rid of them. So now we've got nice shadows on our tessellated environment. If we go back over to our wall here, you notice it's looking a little bit, looking quite good up close, but it's not looking quite so good in the distance there. So let's go back to our profile. 
modify our far modifier. You can see it being modified there, but we're actually still fairly close to this. So then we can go back to our global mix distance and perhaps change that to 200 meters instead of 300. So you notice how we've got the far mix being displayed here instead of the close mix. So if I just push it out, you'll see it start to change. And the, the mix sharpness controls how strong that mixing blend is. So I think our default's about two or three. That just blends it nicely over a bit of distance. We'll set that back to 200. And we can modify that far, far multiplication. So you can see, we can make it a lot, instead of being very small and fine, we can make that quite large and interesting. So just as another way of doing it, you can also see the spat sharp far. It's a very blurry blend in the edge there. If we change that, we can tighten that blending up. I tend to like to have a little bit in the distance anyway. All right, so we've added some textures. Now let's change some textures. Let's change, say, this grass for another grass. Now, unlike before where we had to actually go into Unity's terrain itself, we can actually do that directly inside of CTS. So let's, let's go to our texture library and choose some other textures. So gra stylized grass, let's put that into here. Notice CTS is telling us we need to do something again. And we will also, I might just drop that back down so I can read the, the textures. So that's a small dark one. Let's add our height blend in. And let's add our normal in. We don't need to do smoothness and roughness because we've already done that for you, so let's rebake that. Okay, so now we've got our new texture in there. So if you're swapping a texture, it's easy to do within CTS. If you're adding a texture, you need to go into the terrain itself. If you're removing a texture, you need to go into the terrain itself. So now we've got our new texture here, and all the standard stuff works as per usual. So we can change the, the blending, we can change the normals and the tiling. So we might want to go, yeah, that's too big. Let's make it really nice and small. Okay, up to now I've shown you how to add textures and modify textures. Now I'll show you how to delete textures and also show you what will happen when you do that. So let's remove this rock texture. Now CTS in its texture settings does not allow you to remove textures, so we have to do it in the terrain itself. So we'll select our terrain, we'll go into edit textures, and we've selected our texture, and we'll go remove texture. Okay, we've done that, and you'll notice that CTS is now displaying the wrong thing in that place. So if we go back to CTS, into our profile. And select our profile. It still thinks it's got a texture there and it's actually displaying the wrong texture. So we'll just bake textures again. I've baked the texture and I've removed the texture again. So you just need to go back and paint the correct texture over the area that you're interested in. So there we go, all done. Now this terrain is also looking a little bit bland because we've got no detail information into it. And I turn that off just to show off the textures. But then what I'd do is I'd go back into my detail settings and just dial up that detail so you get just a bit more interest in your terrain. Not too much to be overwhelming, but just enough to add a little bit of subtle interest. Same goes with our far. You can see it dialing in in the distance there. Alright, thanks for watching.